let me start uh, with the, some uh, brief information. So as you know, on January 2nd, demonstrations began in the Mangistau region in uh, Western Kazakhstan against the increasing in the retail price of liquefied fuel gas. The protesters demanded for the reduction of these prices and solution of some uh, social issues. And following instructions of the president, the government uh, promptly responded to the demands of the citizens. The special government commission uh, visited this region, met with the uh, demonstrators and discussed uh, the all issues raised by them. And uh, government took measures and reduced the gas prices and imposed moratorium on the price increase on food products, uh, fuel and uh, utilities. All persons previously detained during the unauthorized actions were released. After the demands uh, of the protesters in Mangastau region were met, demonstrations with similar demands began in all major cities, uh, cities of the country. So uh, the demonstrators uh, requested for the same decrease in the price in their regions as well, like in Mangistau region. So on January 4th, President Tokayev urged citizens not to succumb to provocations during the demonstrations against the increase the gas prices and to strive for mutual trust and dialogue. And the president instructed the local authorities to find peaceful solution and uh, to problems through the dialogue with all interest parties based on the respect for the rights and freedoms of citizens. And uh, since it was the uh, systemic issues and the request of the demonstrators, president dismissed the government uh, and the prime minister. So as you know, for the last few days, I uh, walked in the acting foreign minister. Uh, these sections demonstrated a clear political will and desire to resolve disputes through dialogue, confirming the commitment of the government uh, to the presidential concept of uh, listening state. Unfortunately, the protests in number of major cities uh, were used and uh, hijacked by terrorists, extremists and criminal groups to escalate the situation violent actions. In this regard, the president ordered it to take urgent measures to prevent riots and introduce a state of emergency throughout the country. So despite the undertaken measures, further escalation of violence was caused by massive ar armed attacks on demonstrative institutions, police stations, military bases, civilians, including medical workers, firefighters and journalists. So most difficult situation development in a city of Almaty, where terrorists uh, seized the mayor's office, the local residence of the president, uh, city police department, national security committee and prosecutor offices, and the studios of a uh, number of TV and radio companies. Terrorists also seized the international airport of Almaty, where they were playing uh, planes, aircraft of local and foreign airlines with passengers on the board. And uh, analysis of the situation showed that Kazakhstan was subjected to armed aggression by well-coordinated terrorist groups trained abroad. According to preliminary data, among the attackers there are individuals with experience of combat participation in hotspots on the site of radical Islamist groups. Terrorist groups emerged due to the activation of so-called sleeper cells. In the recent years, we also observed the emergence of religious extremist groups with criminals in prison and detention center. The structure of their movement around the city of fighters in front and uh, looters in the back also demonstrated through uh, organization uh, their actions. Unfortunately, Kazakhstan law enforcement agencies were not prepared for such massive and coordinated attacks in 11 regions simultaneously. Uh, if uh, the initially the rallies in Western Kazakhstan was peaceful and made uh, concrete demands uh, with the social and economic nature, 
participants. So this mass unrest uh, did not make any specific economic or even political demands. They had no intention of negotiating with the authorities. So terrorists aim at uh, uh, disorganizing state institutions, seizing power over the entire Kazakhstan and undermining the constitutional order. Expert notes that attacking the capital uh, uh, would have been sufficient for a simple coup d'etat. So um, due to the sharp aggravation of the situation in the country, President Tokayev assumed the post chairman of the Security Council and on January 6, he ordered to launch counter-terrorist operation. And uh, I would like to say that up to that point, the law enforcement agencies had strict instructions not to use firearms. And now we will present a very short uh, film to you, where you can see that the law enforcement uh, uh, agency personnel, also the our militaries didn't have the uh, any firearms in the hand. The soldiers from the National Guard, and as you can see, they are not having any weapons.
Uh, I have two questions for you. Firstly, uh, the European Parliament will have a resolution this week where they are calling, among other things, for uh, full, independent and transparent investigation with accountability. Is that something that you would be willing to engage with, with MEPs, with the EU, um, uh, to, to have... Um, to, to ensure that it really isn't just the government line, if you like, that we, we, we can say, uh, have a better idea of what exactly did happen on the ground. And you mentioned the matter of corruption. I mean, are you going to tackle corruption at the highest level? Because what we've seen over the years, and we know that in many European capitals and further afield, uh, senior officials within the Kazakh government have large properties in France and London, etc. And um, will you be able to tackle this level of corruption? Yes, uh, as I already mentioned, it, uh, we are nowadays our law enforcement agencies having this large scale investigation. We will, when we will uh, receive the results, we will share with our, all our partners. And also, uh, I will uh, uh, be uh, quite open and transparent to all. And the international organizations like uh, Council of Europe, uh, OEC, and uh, in Geneva, I will meet the, with the office of the High, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, I will meet with the uh, special rapporteurs of the UN on human rights, on uh, on torture, on, uh, and others. And as you know, they have uh, standby open invitation. So uh, they can visit Kazakhstan anytime. We will provide them the full of access to any detention centers or prisons. Uh, so I think that uh, in that manner, we are very open. And uh, regarding their fighting the corruption, indeed, uh, as you can uh, uh, watching now, there is a lot of uh, uh, changes in the, uh, among the heads of the national uh, companies and uh, our president uh, made the task for the new government that we need uh, to avoid all these disproportions, wealth disproportions and the uh, income uh, gaps uh, among the different segments of the population. But specifically uh, the properties, I mean, will you try to, in, in a sense, um, reclaim those assets back to um, Kazakhstan? No, no, let's say that everything will, will be, uh, uh, every movement will be legal on the base of the uh, law. So, uh, supremacy of law, this is undoubtedly. So, uh, any kind of uh, uh, taking back the property or other, it should be the decision of the court for sure. There is uh, no will be any. Um, nationalization or something like that so because we would like to ensure and international and uh, our uh, local business community that uh, uh, everything will be under the law. Yes. Mr. Gergot from Iraq to Iran. First, uh, congratulations for your uh, re-election recently. However, other officials have not been re-elected and some have been sacked. Uh, uh, some uh, are from the law enforcement, uh, others are family of uh, um, former President Vladimir uh, Nazarbayev. Can you tell us why were they sacked? Uh, uh, is it because, uh, uh, for example, the law enforcement were, uh, uh, you know, teaming up with, with uh, what you call the terrorists? Uh, was it because uh, uh, President Nazarbayev uh, uh, has uh, uh, what my colleague said. Uh, there is, by the way, a KPMG report who says that 156 people possess 55% of the wealth of the country. So, is this illustrating uh, this drive to, uh, you know, to put an end uh, to this uh, uh, oligarchy? Yeah, I'll stop here. And also, I would like to know if uh, uh, who else are you meeting except the press in, uh, in Brussels? Uh, sorry? Uh, uh, 
accept us? Uh, yeah. Are you meeting officials like Mr. Borrell and others, and maybe in the European Parliament? Yeah, well? yes. Uh, so, uh, regarding these uh, officials, as you mentioned, uh, First of all, uh, you know that uh, the chairman of the National Security Committee, Mr. Masimov, was uh, uh, arrested and he is under the investigation and trial and definitely his case will be bringing to the court. So before that we could not uh, officially uh, blame him or saying that he, but uh, he's under the um, version that he was involved in all this by this action and some, some other persons who was uh, considered as involved under arrest now but we will provide a fair trial and consideration in the court without the decision of the court they will be not uh, prisoned and uh, <coughs> on other side we do not uh, like to make as a uh, you know that the sharing or de dividing the, the that uh, as you mentioned the properties between the new groups or others so because the our president uh, put forward this uh, the the new reforms they, they just we consider this to escape this uh, disproportions and uh, uh, income tax uh, caps so um, the pupils is for the new public fund we call it to the people of Kazakhstan was launched by our president that uh, they all uh, found uh, the uh, finance or, act uh, or properties from the corruption activities will be uh, sent to this fund and this uh, fund will uh, work very openly in transparent manner and it will be uh, the Council of Directors uh, created by uh, civilians themselves they, and they will uh, look how to uh, for the activity of this uh, fund uh, and um, here in Brussels I just met the foreign minister of Belgium I think here I just uh, gave the interview to France 24 uh, as I understand Mr. Borrell are not in the town and I will meet the uh, Mr. Gilmore and uh, Madame Hakala uh, from the uh, European uh, Commission and uh, also I have the, some meetings with the business communities. And yes, if, let's go back to Nazarbayev. Where is he? So, uh, is he still alive? Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen him for a long time now. So, uh, frankly, uh, frankly speaking, I uh, uh, didn't know where is he was these days. Uh, just his press secretary mentioned that he is in Kazakhstan, and uh, just uh, today we have uh, his video message. Uh, of Mr. Nazarbayev to the people of Kazakhstan saying that he is he in Kazakhstan and he is alive and uh, for sure he is, was not under arrest or something like that. So he mentioning that he is in, in North Sultan, in the mm -hmm. capital of Kazakhstan. And did you believe that he or some members of his family were involved in the protest? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, let's consider everything should be done on the uh, on the base of law and uh, on the legal uh, basis. So to convince someone in in inappropriate activities, I, I think it will be not right. And one more question. So we have seen on these video clips mostly protesters. I wouldn't want to call them terrorists because I don't have any any evidence of that. Uh, but so <clears throat> uh, protesters beating up law enforcement officers. But we have seen also a lot on the so on the social network. Uh, a lot of law enforcement officers and army 
uh, beat me a protester. So do you believe that the, there were also some abuses, some um, abu uh, extra use of the force, disproportionate use of the force by law enforcement officers in Batangi? It was a bit uh, so rough on your side. Yes, as I mentioned that, that General Prosecutor Office opened the special website that the, uh, our citizens anonymously can send the whole video and photo uh, materials they shoot during these days in the different cities. So it will be divided for two parts. One of the, the proving that uh, uh, and evidences about uh, these uh, terrorist attacks. And the second one, if the cases of the excessive use of force by our law enforcement agencies. And based on this uh, video, photo, materials, uh, the prosecutor offices will start the action with the question. Yes. <coughs> David Hirschman with, with Politico. Um, thank you very much for, for coming to, to brief us. I wonder if you could comment though on um, the real damage to, to Kazakhstan's reputation that came from the fact that there was no access for diplomats and journalists as these events were unfolding or severely restricted access. When we were being briefed by some of your counterparts, whether here in the EU or at NATO, what they were telling us is they couldn't, their people could not get first-hand accounts, which of course is the purpose of, of having diplomats in any country. I think you enjoy that, that benefit uh, here and where you post diplomats around the world. And so I wonder if there are steps that, that you have in mind to potentially reassure folks that Kazakhstan is actually a free and open country. Because for us, you know, it's nice to see a video after the fact, but as journalists, you know our job. Our job is to go and to see it firsthand and Kazakhstan didn't, yeah, it's, didn't do its best to make that yeah, possible. Yeah, it's a good question. And as I already said, uh, during these days, we accredited 150 foreign journalists. And uh, they were allowed to visit uh, any cities, Almaty or other cities. And uh, during these days, we had uh, some interviews of the BBC journalists uh, from the places, interviewing the local people. And we are quite transparent. And as I mentioned, we have this visa-free regime for 75 countries, first of all, including OECD and uh, EU uh, states. Uh, and it wasn't stopping. So uh, the same uh, journalists even came uh, to Kazakhstan without accreditation. They were using this visa-free regime, entered it to Kazakhstan, and they referred to us, to, to foreign ministry, and uh, took the accreditation. So your, your, the, the counterparts, your diplomatic counterparts, you said they didn't have access, they're, they're misrepresenting that to us? No, no, I don't think that I would, uh, so, uh, as you can understand, we have diplomatic corps dividing on two uh, part. One, the biggest one in our capital, in North Sultan City, and uh, the all ambassadors uh, located there, and they were free to travel around the city and to 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 to, to, to watch to see what they, they want. And uh, the second part is most in the, the offices of generic general consulates in Almaty city. Also, uh, they were free to go around, but definitely from our side, we was worried about the security. And uh, we just providing the security of the offices, but the personnel was, uh, the staff of these general consulates, they, they were very uh, free to go. And I believe that uh, the nearest time we will receive the more uh, photos, videos, we will share with you, and definitely if there will be um, disproportional use of force, we should, we will recognize that and uh, uh, also be not going to hide. And uh, when we uh, made this film, it was made by my press secretary, we just use the all available video materials in YouTube or other. And uh, we requested to provide the, uh, also with the video and photo materials to our National Security Committee and Ministry of Internal Affairs. But uh, because they using these materials during the investigation, they couldn't uh, share with us. But I believe that uh, we will 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, if I could just go back to the point that the Parliament raised about an, an independent investigation. What you're calling for, you're saying that there's anonymous reporting of videos of, you know, of, of whoever um, acting in a violent way. But I think what the Parliament want is maybe uh, an outside body, an outside individual leading an investigation to show that it is truly independent and that, you know, we've seen other, well, we've seen other governments or regimes say something's terrorism and it's, well, it's people protesting. So, you know, to have that independent uh, verification is very important to the MEPs. And uh, will you act on that recommendation? Yes. Uh, so. Uh... As I already said, the ombudsman accompanying with the NGOs uh, visiting these uh, prisons and detention centers, they already uh, uh, delivered uh, two reports regarding uh, activity in the places. And uh, in the nearest time, she will visit uh, also Brussels and Geneva and uh, Office for the Human Rights in uh, Warsaw. We see, so um, she will also share with the, uh, her position. She involved with with, your, with those uh, investigation uh, processes, and as I mentioned, that we are also very open to all these UN human rights agencies, especially the special rapporteurs. Uh, they have standby open invitation, and they would like to come to uh, to Kazakhstan to watch. Is the investigation going on the right way? So I think that they easily can uh, uh, get the access to it. Can I ask? Yes. yes. So I ask another question. <laughs> don't have. But um, I mean, you called in um, the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Yes. Um, I think people were quite shocked and surprised by that action. And um, I'm just, I mean, we've seen very violent protests in Europe. I mean, with, you know, for example, Gilets Jaunes, we saw huge amounts of violence on, you know, Champs-Élysées here in Europe. And yet, you know, I don't think anybody called for outside uh, involvement in trying to uh, deal with those demonstrations. Uh, how, I mean, it, it, it's, it's odd from somebody looking in uh, that, that that would seem like a suitable course of action. And if you're trying to reassure your citizens, I mean, how does it look to them that you had to call in an outside force? So, uh, as, uh, can I explain the picture so that we have the three waves or stages of the development of this situation? The first one was in the western of Kazakhstan where the Special Government Commission met with the demonstrators, solved the issues, uh, met their demands. The second stage, when the demonstrations took the, uh, all, all around the country with the same economic, social demands. Uh, so, President dismissed the government, uh, the acting government <coughs> took the some measures to meet them. But the third stage is the most uh, uh, toughest one when the uh, uh, this situation was uh, hijacked by the terrorist groups. So uh, then, on the, after that, uh, uh, it was instruction uh, for the law enforcement uh, agency to combat them. But uh, I would say that um, if the violence, yes, very aggressive violence was also in Europe, but they were not armed with the with the firearms and the, 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 the sh shooting the, uh, our government officials. Even, uh, for example, the mayor of Almaty city uh, was uh, attacked by, uh, uh, and fire, his car was fired, uh, and his driver got the bullet in the leg, injured, also accompanied uh, um, TV personnel with him, also uh, one was injured and the second one was uh, killed. So uh, uh, other cases I can say about the uh, son uh, of uh, our national university uh, and his friend was killed during these days in Almaty city and um, uh, the rector of uh, national university is my closest friend, he used to be uh, diplomat, he used to be ambassador to Moscow, 
uh, he used to be the chief of proto presidential protocol and so I know him very well so as you can see the it was the killing even the peaceful civilians uh, by this <coughs> attacker but isn't it also so that you you lost control of part of law enforcement and army Yes, you are quite right. It's a very unpleasant thing to recognize that our law enforcement agencies uh, wasn't able to respond to this massive and well-coordinated uh, terrorist attack in different regions, 11 regions, cities was under attack. So um, that's why we have to refer for the assistance to this uh, CSTO. Um I mean, I, I don't know what the situation is at the moment, but um, I believe a uh, leader of one of the parties, it's the Democrat Party, I believe it's called, has been arrested and uh, detained. Uh, do you consider that person to be a terrorist? Uh, I don't think that uh, any uh, person will be uh, arrested uh, politically motivated. And we don't have the Democratic Party registered in uh, Kazakhstan, so uh, I don't think uh, I, I don't know its Kazakh name, I'm afraid. <laughs> to whom about the topic, yes, but for sure, among the detainees, there, there are not uh, any politically motivated. Yes, we have this uh, arrested uh, staff of the National Security Committee. Which, uh, they are considered involved in, the, in this violence and some of the preparation for this violence. Um, I think Germany has placed an arms embargo um, towards Kazakhstan, as far as I understand. And um, uh, are, are, am I, are you aware of this? No. no, no, as I know, no, we don't have any uh, embargo of any countries. Maybe just a kind of philosophical question. Is business as usual possible between the EU and Kazakhstan after what happened? It's philosophical, no? <laughs> no, uh, our relationship between Kazakhstan and the EU uh, based on the, uh, on the legal documents. As I can say, this uh, intensive partnership and cooperation agreement concluded between EU and Kazakhstan. And in Central Asia, we are only the country which have such a fight legal document. On the basis of this EP, uh, EPCA, uh, we have this uh, strategic council, which is uh, uh, headed by foreign ministries uh, of Kazakhstan and foreign minister of the uh, chairing country in the EU. So the next meeting will be hopefully in March. So, uh, the, uh, my task is just to ensure that uh, there will be no any changes in the foreign policy uh, because as you know our foreign policy is multi-vectoral which is mean we are not uh, connected only to the one organization like CSTO or to one of our neighboring countries we like it to develop a, a partnership and cooperation with all member states of the international community and uh, for sure EU for us, uh, uh, one of the, uh, EU is the one of the major investor to our economy. So, uh, and we would like to ensure that no changes in the investment climate will be, and we will cooperating with the EU on the uh, connectivity between Europe and Asia, because the, the strategically Kazakhstan locates uh, on, the, on the transit uh, between these two continents and uh, also we have uh, good uh, projects for the green economy uh, just this, uh, with the uh, region uh, foreign minister we discussed uh, our uh, projects on the uh, gender equality uh, with the EU we, are, uh, we have uh, this uh, educational project for the Afghan women and girls about 200 Afghan uh, students studying in Kazakhstan and when the Taliban became to power in that country they uh, referred to our government to stay uh, to continue studying in Kazakhstan and uh, 
maybe to find a job uh, to uh, to live in Kazakhstan, which is a great reality. Um, coming back to the sending of uh, peacekeepers, I mean, we assume that it's a very constraining operation in terms of logistics. Also, it costs money. So we understand that the Russians wouldn't want to do it every month. What kind of warranties uh, did your government give to Vladimir Putin that it's not going to happen again? Uh, I don't understand about every month. You mean that they don't want to send troops every month? <laughs> there is the uh, the uh, legal procedures uh, in the framework of the earth organization. They couldn't just decide them to send the peace peacekeepers to in, to Kazakhstan. First of all. It needs the official uh, appeal of our president to the uh, uh, council of this collective security. And then all uh, uh, presidents, uh, other five countries should uh, confirm and to give the official approval uh, for sending the peacekeepers there. And the um, parliaments of the countries also should make the decision because before the signing of the approval, presidents uh, should take the some uh, consent of the parliament, like especially in Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, because they not allowed just to send them. And uh, as I mentioned, the mission is completed, and uh, we hope there is no any other reason for us to to, to appeal for such kind of assistance again. Yes, but did you have to promise something to the Russians? No, we not promised something. We are not uh, going to, uh, to 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 lost our uh, sovereignty or uh, independence. It's uh, we are working as a partners in the framework of this organization. I'm I'm asking you because it's a risk. No, no, I understand. Once, once yes. they are here, this is a big worries uh, uh, among our Western partners, especially when they. Uh, peacekeeping forces entered to Kazakhstan. Uh, everyone thought uh, how long they will stay, or either they will leave or they still stay there forever. There is mostly some boards. They, uh, it's easy to bring them, but then it will be hard to <laughs> to to take them out from from the Kazakhstan. But as you can see, is everything is working on the uh, according to the procedures of this organization. And uh, I believe that uh, in a few days the old peacekeepers will leave Kazakhstan. And you it will, will, be you will gain way. back control of your police and yes. your army, yes. and it's not going to happen again. No, the, uh, even during uh, when the peacekeepers came to Kazakhstan, the, our president and the government controlled the uh, police and the law enforcement agencies and armed forces. We didn't uh, share the control uh, with the peacekeeping forces. Just uh, peacekeeping forces, uh, uh, according to their mandate, was allowed to provide the security of the strategic objects. As I mentioned, the, our uh, national bank uh, with the uh, with this uh, reserves, national reserves, also airports and other facilities. So. Uh, which is allow us to this law for policemen and armed force to take this personnel and uh, just to transfer them for the fighting against the terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. And maybe one follow up question. Yeah. Uh, there was no um, desire to appeal to China because Kazakhstan also has a very, very intense uh, economic cooperation with China. So I believe that Beijing was very worried. What, what, what happened? Yes, um, from the first day, uh, the Chinese government uh, was in contact uh, on the presidential level. Uh, I got the phone call from my uh, colleague, uh, Minister Wani, and uh, they were expressed their worries about the development of situation, expressed their uh, full support for the actions of the president and the government and also they was ready to provide necessary assistance. As I mentioned, the, 
system, many of our partners uh, uh, express the readiness to provide uh, uh, any kind of assistance, including military. But uh, we don't have any legal base to accept the uh, foreign troops uh, from other countries or organizations, except this CSTO. Mm -hmm. But they offer it. Who offer it? Uh, yeah. They offer it, the, the, they say any kind of assistance, which is we understand also can be considered in the case. Can I ask, sorry, a further question, but David, you can <laughs> get past. Um, whoops, sorry. Okay. There. Um, whoops. Um, at previous events uh, organized by the NC, um, I think I've spoken with a, a previous uh, minister who said that, um, it, uh, I, I, I can't remember the exact subject of the briefing, but um, he was referring to, you know, we were talking about Islam extremism, and he said that there were, um, there, there, there had been Kazakhs who had been in Syria and they did have former combatants and they were dealing with it. But he, he, he certainly played down the issue and didn't seem to think that it was a particularly grave problem within Kazakhstan. Uh, how has that situation changed? No, uh, mm, indeed, the, some of our citizens was involved in terrorist activity in the hotspots, so-called, like Syria, Iraq, and in cooperation uh, with uh, our US uh, partners, we brought back uh, about 600 uh, our citizens from Syria and Iraq. It was in uh, three operations, maybe bring them, among of them, uh, children, women, and uh, these terrorist fighters. So terrorist fighters now uh, in the prisons, and uh, the women and uh, kids under the rehabilitation processes uh, to, to adopt in uh, our society. And uh, uh, also when the international uh, contingent uh, uh, left Afghanistan. Uh, we that time we uh, our government warned that uh, it going to the spread uh, of the Islamist uh, extremism and radicals around the, the region of Central Asia, because we understand that uh, the the coming uh, Taliban to power uh, gives you know that, that uh, spiritual impetus to to other radicals and extremists to rise uh, in the region. So we consider this also part of the uh, reason of this current situation in Kazakhstan. And if you believe that they have infiltrated law enforcement and army, any which is which would explain partly why you lost control over them? Yes, as you can see that some uh, high-ranking officials of the Sec National Security Committee was arrested. We consider that uh, uh, they are among the organizers of this violence and also connected to this uh, uh, armed mi militants. And uh, we understand that uh, so many uh, extremists and, uh, and terrorists couldn't uh, uh, penetrate into the Kazakhstan in one or two days. So that's why we see, we understand that uh, it was using of the, these uh, sleeping cells. And the uh, National Co Security Committee couldn't uh, recognize it this before the, all these events. So it shows that uh, either they uh, knew it about that, but uh, didn't take any actions, so uh, they just overslept on the situation, which is very difficult to believe. Yeah, and uh, on the other side, uh, in prisons and detention centers, as I mentioned, there was merging between these uh, uh, is Islamic uh, radicals and uh, criminals. So, uh, because during this uh, violence, as we considered that in front was the, about 100 uh, weaponed fighters and behind was the, some group of the 
criminals for their looting and search and steal their properties on the raft. Maybe we'll take one more question and then we need to follow yes. our program. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for all the questions. Thank you. I, I, I was just interested in the course of the protest to the, um, the, 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 mar the market of the Bitcoin that uh, fell sharply because of the troubles in Kazakhstan and then we realized that there was a lot of uh, mining done in Kazakhstan. So I, was, I, 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 I see it as a, as a side. Uh, topic obviously but uh, I mean since we know that now that there is so much mining in Kazakhstan and at the same time it's also so so bad for the environment I wondered if uh, there would be a change in the, your government's policy regarding mining uh, yes the last few years we witnessed that uh, with Bitcoin uh, mining rises in Kazakhstan we became the number uh, two in the world for the producing of this Bitcoin and uh, uh, this is we considering that uh, we, we have the cheapest electricity in the world. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, we had a lot of this electricity. So th that's why the, uh, we have the, so many uh, foreigners come to Kazakhstan and open these farmers, <laughs> Bitcoin farmers in Kazakhstan. But uh, I would like to explain that uh, Kazakhstan very, um, well connected and integrated to the world uh, economy so that's why this uh, situation influenced on the rising the price of the oil because we are one of the biggest oil producer of the uranium price increasing because they are number two in the, uh, among the uranium producers and suppliers of these uh, nuclear tablets for the uh, nuclear power stations all around the world